Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Aquarium of the Pacific's Aquarium Online Academy. My name is Emily, and I'm a member of our education team here, uh, and we're broadcasting live from Long Beach, California, which is about 45 minutes outside of Los Angeles. So uh, we have a great class planned today for you. We are going to draw together today. So if you have a moment right now, go ahead and grab some things that you can draw with. And it can be anything that you like. Today, I happen to be drawing with a whiteboard and a whiteboard marker, and I have an eraser nearby. But if you have paper, if you have recycled paper, crayons, markers, anything you like, we, anything goes today in our class. All right? Also, if you have any questions about anything that we're talking about, feel free to text us. If you're watching this live, you can text this number right here. So text your questions to 562-286-1838. Once again, you can text your questions to 562-286-1838. If you're watching the recording of this, feel free to email your questions in. We're still checking those out. You can email live, L-I-V-E, at lbaop.org. Uh, also, for those of you who are watching at home with a grown-up, just understand, have your grown-ups help you to text your questions and comments in, and uh, normal standard text messaging rates do apply. All right? So, are you ready? Did you have a chance to go grab some stuff to draw with today? Because that's what we're going to do today. And we're going to be looking at one particular habitat. It's a habitat that I happen to love. Now, a habitat is a place where animals make their home. And the habitat we're going to be looking at today is this one right here. Has anyone seen anything like this before? What do you notice about this habitat right here? Does anybody know what it's called? Great questions, right? Great answers coming up right here. Maybe you've seen this place before and you know that it is a coral reef habitat. So today we're going to be examining and drawing the coral reefs and all the things that live there. Now coral reefs are really amazing because they happen to be uh, located in places where the water is really, really warm. So you can imagine that as we draw, we're in this beautiful, warm place. What else do you notice about this habitat? Well, let's take a look at maybe a, a view of one of our exhibits here in Long Beach. Now this right here happens to be a loop of a beautiful video of our live coral exhibit. Take a look right now and see what you notice. Because this is the habitat we're going to be looking at today. Hmm. Do you notice that there's a bunch of corals here? Absolutely. The thing that I love about corals is that it's a living landscape. That means everything you see here, even the things with the bumps and the little spines and the little plates, all of those things are alive. Those are all corals. Coral reefs are really amazing places because lots of animals make their home on the coral reef. Some animals will live there their whole lives. Some will go there just to eat. Some will go there to uh, reproduce or mate. Some will go there to raise their babies like a nursery. So coral reef habitats are really, really important. Now this animal right here is an animal that lives on a coral reef. We're see seeing a big zoomed in picture of it, but you're right. Bright, colorful fish live on the coral reef too. So we've seen a bunch of images so far. I'm going to go over to my special drawing board and we're going to get started on how to draw the coral reef. So go ahead and take one last look at this habitat right here, and we are gonna get started. Now, the first thing we're gonna do, I have a special camera here, and my friend Amanda is uh, over controlling the cameras that we're able to see. And the first thing we're gonna do is, we are gonna set up our habitat or our home for all these animals today. Now, corals are really interesting because they have all different shapes uh, and sizes. Um, I'm actually gonna move that aside for one minute because I wanted to show you what a coral skeleton looks like. So here we have, I'm gonna put a piece of dark paper in the background here so you can see it a little bit better. Here I happen to have a coral specimen. Now, this is not as colorful as the coral you just saw, and that's because this coral is just the skeleton. So this happens to be um, what's underneath all the colorful living uh, tissue that's on top. So this is just the inside skeleton, but you can see it has all different beautiful little shapes. If we take an even closer look here, let's let it zoom in. 
every place where you see a little hole is where one animal lives. So this coral right here that's about the size of my hand is home to hundreds and hundreds of little critters that would be living here. And you can see right here that this coral has really different shapes. What do you notice about it? What word would you use to describe something that looks like this? Let me show you one more coral before we get started on drawing them. So this is the top view of the coral. This is sort of the side view of this coral. Let me grab one more coral and we can take a look at a different shape of coral. This one looks really different. So this is a really different type of coral. It's also a reef building coral. Have a look here. See how different they look? Now this is once again just the skeleton. So this is what's living, uh, this is the part that's on the inside. But you can imagine if this was still on the coral reef, it would have all this colorful tissue. And when I say tissue, I mean like how we have skin and muscles on the outside of our skeleton. Corals have flesh on the outside of their skeletons too. And so this is the skeleton, this is what's on the inside, but you can imagine it would be covered with tissue um, just in the way that we have muscles and, and skin on our bones. Um, the coral has tissue on its skeleton as well. So this one has sort of these rumply textures. This one is bumpy and has almost like these little fingers that are bumpy. So all different kinds of uh, corals that live here. I'll show you one third type of coral. Look how different this coral is right here in the middle. This is one big uh, coral right here. This is a plate coral, sort of shaped like a, a tongue actually. You can see this is what it would look like. It's actually really, really flat. Here, I'll move this aside. It's really, really flat. And then this is the top view of it. All right. So. Uh, these are all the different types of shapes of corals. There's many, many more, and we're going to get started on drawing these corals. So I'm going to move my corals aside here, and I'm going to pull back my drawing board. Do you have your drawing materials ready to go? All right, so I'm going to draw a few things, and then we're going to take some questions, because it looks like all our viewers at home have some great things that they're thinking about. So let's start by drawing some corals in our coral reef habitat. Now the first one that we showed you kind of looked like, I'm going to draw some rocks too first. So I'm going to put some rocks down on my coral reef, all different shapes and sizes, because corals uh, need to anchor to something that's tough. So I put some sort of roundish, jaggedy rocks right here on the bottom. And then I'm also going to draw, start drawing my coral. So I happen to have um, I'll draw like a blobby finger-like coral right here, and maybe it has many layers to it. Kind of looks almost like lettuce, but you can imagine they're really stony too. So um, I'm going to add some dots on mine just so that we can imagine that it's a, a stony coral here, a reef building coral. But you can feel free to draw any shape that you like. Maybe I'm going to add some shading too to my rocks so that it looks more rocky. If you have different colors too, feel free to use different colors as you draw yours. I'm going to add another type of coral over here. I'm going to make this coral that I'm about to draw look kind of like reindeer antlers. Can you imagine in your head right now what reindeer antlers look like? So maybe it looks kind of branchy like reindeer antlers. And you can draw yours any shape you like. You can make it any size you like too. And I'm going to add a couple of them that look like that right here. If you have other crayons or markers at home, feel free to go ahead and add the colors that you want to add too. I'm going to add a couple more dots on this one because I like the dots. Feel free to add different textures to yours, um, anything that you like to add. Yeah, why don't we take a look, Amanda had a great idea, why don't we take a look really quickly, if you want to get some inspiration from our exhibits here at the aquarium, you can see this is a live view of our big trough exhibit, or our largest tropical exhibit. Now, the thing that I notice the most here, of course, is all those fish. I'll get to those fish in just a little bit, but you can see all the corals that are around here too. 
Some corals are really small. Some corals look like they've got these branches, like the antlers that I was talking about. Um, some more, look more like fingers. Others look much more rocky. So we have a lot of different shapes and size corals in this habitat. Now, just a secret, in our big trough exhibit, this exhibit right here, a lot of these corals, in fact, all of these corals are artificial, um, but and that's because we want to make sure we protect reefs out in nature so we don't take a ton of uh, the corals out of nature. We actually provide the same kind of home for all of our fish. It's just um, man-made corals here. So that's what you're looking at right here. Take a look for some inspiration, though. Do you see a coral that you'd like to add to your picture? You know, I might add uh, on mine sort of a tabletop-looking coral, too. So I'm going to add one on this side that looks much more flat. And maybe it's got like a couple of different tables to it. So uh, here's a different type of coral that I've got here. All right. And I might add some um, like wiggly lines to add some texture to my corals right here. And then I have you all heard of a, a brain coral? I might add a brain coral right here too. And it's going to look like a brain. And Amanda's got a great picture of a, a brain coral there. You can see it's round, but it has all these great little grooves in it, almost like a maze or um, like a puzzle that you would do. So that is a brain coral. I just added one, uh, a tiny one on my picture, at the very, very bottom. You can see that there. So I've got a bunch of corals in this habitat here. Now I'm gonna uh, pause and we're gonna take some great questions um, that we see here. Um, Corbin wanted to know, do fish eat coral? Well, as a matter of fact, some fish do eat coral. Now, the fish that we saw earlier in Big Trop or in our live coral exhibit, most of those fish don't actually eat corals, but there's a couple that do. There's a fish called a parrotfish. Let me move aside so you can see its great beak right here. This parrotfish, this is a zoomed in view. Um, most of them are about oh, like a foot, a foot and a half long. Uh, and they have this beautiful specialized beak right here. So they have a beak kind of like a bird and uh, it's actually fused teeth and they can use those to crunch on the coral and they crunch it off. They take a little bite, they chomp it off and they actually digest um, the tissue. Remember I talked about how corals on the outside of their skeleton, they have soft tissue, just like we have muscles and skin. Muscles and skin are type of tissue on top of our skeleton. Corals have a, a tissue on the outside of their skeleton too. The um, parrotfish here digests that coral, um, the, the tissue, the soft part, but then it, it actually has, it can't digest the skeleton and so it poops out sand. So that's one really cool thing. Um, the, the coral skeleton makes sandy beaches in a lot of tropical places. So this is an example of one fish that does in fact eat coral. There are a couple of other fish like butterfly fish. This is one that you might see here at the Aquarium of the Pacific. These are the kind that kind of take little itty bitty snips. You can see this fish happens to have a really, really tiny little mouth right there. Um, and so it takes tiny little bites at just the tissue parts of, of those corals. So if you've ever gone to a warm and beautiful tropical place and you've gone snorkeling or swimming in a tropical reef, maybe you've seen some of these. If you've never been, you can always take a look at one of our live cams and imagine that you're there in that beautiful warm water and there's these little fish, some of which are nipping at the coral reef. Now, uh, I've gotten a, a couple of other great questions. Oliver out there wants to know why are clownfish called clownfish? I think clownfish are called clownfish because they have that beautiful sort of funny coloration um, and it's brightly colored. Um, this is a type of clownfish. They don't all look like Nemo. They look sort of like Nemo. This is an anemone fish right here. Uh, and so they get their name uh, just because they have this like fun and bright coloration, kind of like the outfit of a clown. Um, they don't have to be funny to be a clownfish. Great. Uh, another question that we got out there, great question from Karsten. Karsten wants to know how many different types of coral are there? It turns out there's lots of different types of corals out there. Uh, on my cartoon, I drew, oh, 
know like four or five types, but if we were to go out and draw every type of coral that's out there, there's hundreds and hundreds of reef building corals out there. I think it's more than 800 species of just reef building corals. And then there's a whole other category of corals that don't build reefs at all, but they're still corals. Um, and they look more like fans and things like that. Um, maybe if we show the, um, the uh, live coral, or I'm sorry, the Antheus exhibit, it has a, a fan in there. That's a type of non-reef building coral. Um, but all different, corals come in all different shapes, all different types of corals. Uh, so you never know what, what's out there. Um, there's lots and lots of different kinds that are out there. Uh, Gray wanted to know what species use the coral reef for protection. Now, the cor that's a great question, Gray. Turns out the coral reef can be protection for all kinds of animals. So uh, if you think back to our view of our big trop exhibit, or this exhibit right here in Antheus, all these little fish that live here could duck in between corals and find their safe little nooks um, if they needed to. And so lots and lots of different uh, species of fish like will find their way amongst the corals. We will also see invertebrates um, sometimes hiding in there. Um, all different types of creatures will make their home in a coral reef and the coral reef provides a lot of little hiding spaces for these animals. So it's a great protection. The other thing that's kind of cool is a lot of communities that have really healthy coral reefs, human communities that have coral reefs are also protected by the coral reef because coral reefs can be, when they're healthy, really resilient. So if there's a big storm that comes by, actually communities, coastal communities that have the, that normally have coral reef, um, if they have a nice, strong, healthy coral reef, they actually do better when there's a big storm that comes in because the coral reef, it can protect even humans, even though we don't live on the reef, which is a pretty amazing thing that corals do for us as humans. Uh, Jude and Gray wanted to know, uh, what colors should the three corals be? This is what I love about corals. They can be any color you really imagine. Take a look. This is a soft coral right here, this sort of fan-shaped one that's um, right here. Uh, it's like pink and white. Um, it's, it's pink and white, but some of them are yellow. I've seen ones that are sort of this bluish green color. Um, there's all different colors of coral. So you, it's up to you. You can make your corals any color you like today. Um, and then Orion has a question for us. Um, do corals have veins? That's a great question. So corals don't have veins like you and I do. Um, they actually have, um, their tissue is really different. So when, and remember, when I say tissue, I don't mean like the tissue that you use to blow your nose. I mean like the stuff that's on the outside of them. It's just built really different. Um, they're a lot, they're actually related to jellies. So the next time you come to the Aquarium of the Pacific and you touch a jelly, um, you could feel how jellies have that softness about them. Corals are their cousins and have the same kind of soft tissue. Um, and it, so they don't have veins and arteries like we do because um, they don't have the same kinds of organ systems like we do. It's mostly water, actually. They have a lot of water in their bodies um, and their chemistry is a lot of water. Great questions today, everybody. All right, let's go back to the drawing board here and see if we can add some critters to our habitat now. So I've added a bunch of these different corals. I think I'm going to add some fish. Now the fish that I really loved in one of those cameras were those little itty bitty antheus. So I'm going to draw a little shoal of antheus. Now um, there are some fish that uh, that school and there are some that, that we call shoal. That means they just stick together. I think I'm going to just do itty bitty little ones. The cool thing about antheus is they're really little and they have a little fork, um, forked tail. So I'm just going to draw a bunch of them. All right, so hopefully you guys can see. These are my antheus all swimming together. They're not as tight as like a school of sardines, but they're sort of hanging out together and they have that V-shaped tail on them. Yeah, let's take a look at the antheus and you can sort of see that. But the thing I wanna do is if I'm able to color in this picture later, I wanna add those beautiful colors. Look at that bright pink and bright orange right here. The antheus are the fish that you see the most in here. There's ones that have like a little square on the side of them. There's some that have um, sort of a different body color and then their fins are a different color, if you notice that. Yeah, so there's all these great antheus that live here. 
Um, something else I think I want to add to my uh, coral reef here is I'm going to add the face of a big grouper peeking out right here. Now groupers have big mouths, so I'm going to draw a big old mouth right here. And here's our grouper just peeking out. Right there, peeking out from behind. Actually, I'll, I'll keep him right there. Our largest, um, one of our, some of our largest fish will tuck themselves behind um, parts of the coral reef. I'm going to, if I could draw him a different color, I would add him a different color. But um, right now, just for viewing, we have this big old grouper right here and he's hiding behind the coral. All right. One other thing I noticed uh, in our big trop, our tropical gallery, was I noticed we have some big animals that live there. Outside of this big grouper we have hiding right here. Let's go back and take a look. What do you notice? Do you notice any of our larger animals? Oh, I see one now. There's a bonnet head shark. Here comes a zebra shark right there. That's this one moving all the way across the screen. Oh, we have stingrays here. Let's draw some of the bigger animals that live here as well. Um, so maybe I'll add a couple of the bigger fish and a couple of the bigger sharks. Um, so let's see. I'm going to add a shark up here. And uh, for simplicity today, I think I'm actually just going to draw a generic shark. Um, and one thing, one way that you can draw a nice uh, shark really easily is you draw a football like this. Oops, let me move this down. You draw a football. I have a big football right here. Before you close the football off, I always draw a little tail. This one will be a little trimmed off here. Actually, let me move the football over so we can fit the whole thing. I want to have the whole thing on there. So here's my football. There's the tail. And then the tail is like a moon shape. So if you draw a football with a moon right behind it, that's the shape of a shark. I'm going to add some fins, some triangle shaped fins on the top. Those are dorsal fins. Um, I'm going to add the side fins, kind of like airplane wings. Those are the pectoral fins. There's one in the back. Um, sharks also have little fins in the very back. And then one teeny one right there. So here's my shark. I'm going to give it... It has five gills. And there is my shark eye. So I have a shark right there. Wait, you guys want me to add teeth? Let's add some teeth. Okay, you can add some teeth to your shark too. So this is a cartoon shark. We don't happen to have one of these in a uh, big trop too, but you can see all you have to do to draw a shark is to start with a football, add that moon right there for the tail, sort of that crescent shaped moon, and add a whole bunch of fins. Most sharks have two triangles on the top for their dorsal fins. They have a set on the side like airplane wings. They have a set in the very back, front, uh, left and right there. Um, those are their pelvic fins. They have a little anal fin right there. Don't forget to add some teeth. Different sharks have different shaped teeth. So feel free to add whatever shaped teeth you'd like and add the gills. My shark happens to have five gills. Most sharks have either five, six, or seven gills. Most of them have five though. So I've got a shark in my habitat right here. Do you think we should add some more fish? I think so. There's a lot that we have here. We have some beautiful bat fish that live here at the aquarium. And batfish, the thing I like about them is they're basically a sideways triangle with a little tail. And you can draw um, like the bars on them too. So if you draw a bunch of sideways triangles, I made mine almost like a, like a spade shape, like a shovel. And um, those can be your batfish. So sideways triangle, they have stripes on them, little bars on them like that. We're going to see if we can see any in our view. Oh, right there. It's swimming away. Doesn't it look like a sideways triangle with a tail? Yeah, I thought so too. We also have actually one fish that I haven't drawn yet. It's a toughie. It's a tough one to draw. I'm looking for a fish with a big bump on its head and a horn. Can you think of another animal that has a big horn on its forehead? Oh, did you think of a unicorn? 
Yeah, because we actually have unicorns in this exhibit, but they're unicorn fish. So let's see if we can spot one. Oh, I see some in the very back. Oh, right there. Let me dip down right there. It's hard, a little bit hard to see, but you can see they have sort of a peaked head. So they look diamond shaped with like a little, um, with a little horn coming off of that. So I'm going to go back to the drawing board and I'm going to add two unicorn fish to my exhibit here. Um, they look a little bit like a sideways kite. So if you draw a diamond that's sort of turned on its side, or if you think about it almost like an ice cream cone turned on its side, maybe a pointy ice cream cone. Can you see how that might be the shape? Um, they have a, a shape, a tail that's actually like a half moon, and then they have a big bump out like this. So those are our unicorn fish. And I'm going to add a little dot and some fins on the side. So those are our unicorn fish. All right, I might add, and in fact, I might add another coral here in the middle. Another webby looking finger like coral. Right there. This one is also going to have dots. I also was thinking about maybe a giant clam. Should we add a giant clam? I'm going to add it in this corner. They're a little bit hard to sometimes see, but they look like a big, um, it looks like an oval with like a ripple in the middle. Yeah, we can look and see. We have, oh, sorry, I'll move this up too. We, we have a, a picture. It's not the best picture in the world, but you can sort of see what I mean. Um, I drew the view that shows you the shell and then the ripple there, but that's what a giant clam actually looks like. They, they kind of don't look like the clams you would see at the market or at a restaurant. They look really different. They have that big ripply outside there. Here at the Aquarium of the Pacific, we have a bunch of these on exhibit. Oh, let's take a look. I just, Amanda just said, we can see the grouper. We can, the Queensland grouper right there. Look at that big old downturned mouth. And they like to live at the bottom of the ocean, um, sort of the bottom of the exhibit too. Uh, and they occasionally venture up though. Sometimes this Queensland grouper will actually go over to a coral that is a one specific coral that's on exhibit because there's a bunch of teeny little cleaner wrasses that live there. And kind of like you would go and take a shower, this, uh, this Queensland grouper likes to go and park on top of a coral to get its uh, kind of bath. And so the cleaner wrasses come out and they pick at dead skin cells and they sort of clean up the, the Queensland grouper right there. That is a very big fish. So I know it's hard to tell when you're viewing from home how big the scale is on some of these. You can see our beautiful eagle ray down here has those spots. Uh, the, the Queensland grouper is like, it's like Emily sized. It's pretty big. Oh, look at that beautiful, the eagle ray is looking so pretty right now. All right, I have a couple of other questions um, as we continue here. Alana wants to know, does the living organism inside the coral determine the coral color? Yes, they actually do. So corals get their colors from a lot of different um, creatures that live inside of them. So the coral not only has its own living creatures, it's a colonial organism or colony. So there's many, many, or, uh, many, many animals that live on one skeleton. Um, can you imagine if you and your whole family shared one skeleton? That's the life of a coral, but inside the tissue. So inside that soft tissue, it's not just the corals. They actually have algae that live inside of them and the algae helps to determine the colors. All right. Um, so uh, a couple of other questions. Gray wants to know what species use, oh, sorry, we got that one. Miles wants to know why are coral reefs um, covered in coral? Well, it just happens to be a spot where lots of corals can live and thrive. And so these coral reef habitats uh, have a lot of sun because the, the algae, the plant-like organisms that live inside of them, um, and it's usually got a, a sort of set conditions that make it really good for corals. Um, and uh, so it needs a lot of sunlight. It actually needs to have really clear water, so they have a lot of access to the sunlight above. Um, Roman wants to know how much coral is in the ocean. Well, there's actually a lot of coral in the ocean, but it only lives in really specific places. So coral reefs uh, are mostly tropical. 
Uh, and so if you go to the middle of the Earth, right, where it's the warmest um, around the equator and then sort of above and below it, um, those are the tropics. Those are the areas that have more coral reefs than others. But corals can live in lots of different places. You can even get corals on the east coast of the United States in the Atlantic Ocean. There's little star corals. They're not reef forming, but they are out there. So it just depends. Uh, there are some corals that even live in the very deepest part of the deep sea. Uh, and those are non-reef building corals. Uh, and they look like they have amazing shapes like spirals and, and uh, like long plumes and things like that. So they have amazing, amazing shapes there. Those are soft corals. Uh, Benicio wants to know, do corals grow in cold water like our local waters? They can grow in um, temperate water as well, like I mentioned. Uh, we just don't get coral reefs here. So we don't see the same kind of view like you see behind me. We get little um, more solitary corals that are individual. Um, but you can get corals in temperate water. There's all different kinds of corals that live in all different kinds of habitats. Today, we happen to be featuring tropical coral reefs because um, we happen to have an entire gallery that's devoted to tropical habitats. Um, all right, and let's see, I think, uh, oh, we got another great question. How many colors are there of coral reef? Well, you can imagine, even just in the view that you're looking at right now, there's a bunch of different colors behind me. It's a little hard to see because of the lighting, but you can see there's sort of pinks. Um, this is a great picture right here. These yellows and pinks and blues and purples, oranges, all sorts of different colors. And uh, a really healthy reef has lots of different types of corals. Uh, that's high diversity, biodiversity. And so in a really healthy reef, you could see lots and lots of colors. So great questions today. Well, I want to thank you for joining me. We're going to take one last look as we wrap up at our coral reef habitat. I hope that you had fun drawing your coral reef. We started by building a habitat with the rocks, and then we added corals, and then we added all kinds of fish that were visiting that habitat or living there all the time. Some were very small, and some were really large and have all sorts of different shapes. So thank you for joining us today. Uh, once again, if you have other questions, feel free to email us at live, L-I-V-E, at lbaop.org. Hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye, everybody.